Did you push the on button? I certainly hope so. Okay. <laughs> he pushed the on button. I'm scraping the last little bit. This is chuck full of those seeds from the vanilla bean. Mm. I don't want to waste a bit of it. I'm going to put that in there. Dennis is helping so much. He's going to be carrying some stuff out to the kitchen soon. Um, all right. I have sprayed with Pam. I have put a piece of uh, parchment in there and I pulled it through. See, and ripped it off the bottom so it's nice and tight. And then I sprayed a little more Pam on top of that. So first thing we're going to do is put some of the brownie, some of the brownie mix into the bottom. And I'm going to put about half, I guess. Oh boy, this is going to be a mess. Because I have my things too close together. I have my Instapot ready to go. <sighs> I am being entertainment for Dennis today. Okay, so I put... I'm going to have to move my Instapot a little bit. I cannot do it so close together. There we go. So I would say, just kind of eyeball it and put about half of your brownie mix in there. Not quite, but just about. I would say in my pan, Dennis, your opinion, is that about a half an inch? So I put about a half an inch in the bottom of the pan, okay? Now, the main problem is my hands are a mess and I don't, I can't reach my stuff. My paper towels are all the way across, of course. So I'm going to take and put the cheesecake batter in on top. Thank you. Dennis is trying to get me that. On top of the brownie batter. But I'm only going to put about half of that because I forgot that I wanted to put some of the cherries on top of the brownies. So that didn't work very well. This is going to be fun to see how this turns out. I'm going to just hold this from the edge right there for a little minute. And I'm going to put some of the cherries. Thank you. Um, oh boy. Thank you. Use that for the spoon. Oh boy, you'll be better off when you do this in your kitchen and you can stick your hand under the running water. Okay, so now I have some of the cheesecake batter on top of the brownie batter and we're going to take some of this che cherries and I'm going to try to mostly just get the cherries and I'm going to drop them on top of the cheesecake. This is a wild ride. Whoa! I should have hit Brad a bowl out and then I could have dumped this out and I could have worked around all this gelatinous mess here. You know, they put so much gunk and how many cherries, right? But it's going to be worth it. We hope. <laughs> or, you know, lesson learned. So I'm trying to get just a cherry plus a little 
of the cornstarch uh, glop. But I'm getting mostly glop. In a minute I'm going to pour it on the tabletop here and become so frustrated. Okay. Oh, that's too close. I have now gone into hand mode. Sometimes you just gotta play with your food. Couple more. Mostly we'll put the cherries on the top when we get ready to serve it. Okay. <laughs> I basically need a wet sponge from the kitchen, I think. Okay, so let's put some more cheesecake. Let's put the remainder of the cheesecake batter. Okay, let's layer the remainder of the cheesecake batter on top. Let's see if I can do that nicely. Remember, we're just experimenting here, so we might be a winner and we might just not be a winner. We don't know yet. Looks like it's just going to be about right. Take that away, and in the process, take this, and the eggs, and the parchment, and bring back the parchment. This is parchment paper, and bring back the sponge that's got some wetness to it. I'm going to put a few little glops of, you want to see how this looks so far? Okay. I don't want to tilt it too much. So I'm going to just put a little bit more glops. You know what? I need like this. A little scooper. Which is the littlest. Okay. So, yeah, that's much better. I can scoop just a little bit. I'm throwing this in by, I would say, tablespoons. And... I'm only going to put like four glops, four glops on top. And I'm not even going to mix it, okay? I'm not even going to swirl it. So here's how it looks, okay? And that's probably going to sink. And hopefully we're going to have it. Now I have a cup and a half of water in the Instapot. Now what I'm going to show you once I wipe my hands off is how in the Instapot baking world we do things. Thank you, Dennis. He brought me a wet sponge. I thoroughly appreciate this. Um, this is heavy duty. You want to get the heavy duty Reynolds wrap. And if you have the super large jumbo size, even better. Oh, this feels so good to get all that sticky off of there. Oh, I'm feeling so much happier right now. 
it was really creepy feeling. <laughs> okay, so just wipe the edge. Okay, thank you, honey. Okay, so take your Happy Duty Reynolds wrap and pull out a really big piece, okay? Like maybe two feet long. Oh, no. Yeah. And take out another piece the same size. Okay, so I'm going to take another two feet out. Just eyeball it in approximately the same way. There you go, babe. Thank you. So this is how you make a sling for when you're lowering anything into your Instapot. So that it's nice and sturdy. Put it two levels in. Then fold it in half just to get a guideline. And open it back up. Okay? Now, lay it down and wipe off the chocolate brownie that got on it when you set it down too close to the table. Okay, so to the guideline that's in the center, you want to fold this part downwards. Got it? So it reaches the center. Kind of understand the concept? I'm not doing it too well because I'm looking at you guys in the thing. I'm trying to do it like in the mirror. So the bottom part, you do the same thing. Fold it up to the center line. Okay? So now you got the two sides folded towards each other and meeting in the halfway mark. I did not do this too well, but you got the idea, right? Then fold it in half again. So, see how nice and sturdy it is? It's nice and sturdy. It has like some... Okay, what you're going to do is you set your pot on top of it. Let's see if I can raise it enough to show you. So it's like a lifter, right? And you're going to put that, you're going to lower that down into your Instapot liner that has a cup and a half of water and your thing. So I'm going to lower that down, and by lowering it down, you have a handle. So when you want to lift it up, you can lift up the handle, right? So now what we're going to do, when you use your Instapot to build pressure, it has to have water, and it has to create steam. That's what's going to make the pressure lock. So to keep the steam from falling directly back down on our cheesecake, we're going to put a paper towel over the top, loosely over the top of the cheesecake. Don't get it down in the cheesecake like I just did. That was no bueno. Okay. Throw it away. Bring this up. Gonna try it the way it's supposed to be done before you even put it in there. Okay. Do it again. Do it till you get it right. Okay. So. I'm going to put it over the top and then put a piece of foil, which I forgot. Okay, we can fold this up over here like this. Okay, push it down. Stretch. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And then you kind of just gently fold down, but leave them up high. If only I could show you how you should have your foil, right? Kind of up so it's not pushing down on your paper towel. Your paper towel is just to catch some of the thing, okay? We're gonna put this in here. Put it in here, in your Instapot, very gently. And then, remember what I taught you, always check to make sure your silicone seal is all the way around, correctly tucked behind the little stainless steel fence, okay? And we're going to put the lid on, lock it, and 
it's on the position, the steamer button is on the position for steaming. And we're going to bake at manual. I think 28 minutes. That's what he called for. I know, but he didn't have brownie in there cooking too. I'm thinking add one for the brownie. What do you think? Yeah. We're going to add an extra minute for the brownie. So now we can sit and relax for, it's going to take about 12 minutes or so to um, to come to temperature to the point where it's pressurized and then it'll start counting down from 29. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and I will see you a little bit later. Okay, bye. Dennis is going to push the button. Bye. Hi, I'm back. So we've had 29 minutes and 10 minutes just setting after the 29 minutes, okay? The 10 minutes, it's not, it's kind of naturally releasing the um, pressure on its own, okay? So I have the pressure cooker here. I'm going to release the rest. You see there's very little. Did you hear? It was just a teeny little bit of steam. Okay. What have we got? So I'm going to lift it up. And Dennis is going to push it aside, I think. Can you see? It did rise. So I'm going to take off the paper towel. Oh my. I think we might, just might, have a winner. Oh my goodness. Now, there is a little problem with some of that chocolate on the top. Looks real liquidy. But I think that's where the steam was. So I'm going to take one of these paper towels and just wick, let that sop up a little bit. Oh my goodness, this looks like it's going to be good. Only a little bit of steam on the top. Now I have to tell you that when I made other cheesecakes, this had, even though this had absorbed a lot of the steam, like this one did, that um, there was a little bit on top that needed um, to be um, absorbed. But this is looking really, really good. So let me see if I can get you a good shot. I'm gonna bring it up here. Can you see that? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this to this side over here. I'm just gonna put it and let it cool to room temperature. And then I'm gonna put it, once it's at room temperature, I'm going to put it in a container with a lid and um, put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for two days. And then we will unveil it, uncook it, uncork it. Um, I think the last time I let this sit for about, but I'm thinking I maybe should let it sit longer because I have the brownie underneath there and I'm not sure what's going to happen with the brownie under there. I'm thinking maybe I'll even put it in the refrigerator in this container. Won't hurt it. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not sure if the brownie base actually cooked up or if it's already under there. So, um, but we're going to put it in the fridge after it cools off. I just wanted to say goodbye and once again, Happy Easter. I hope your family and you had a lot of new memories that you can log in the back of your head so when you're great grandma you got all those great memories to think back on and enjoy even if they are busy and they're doing their own thing 
You'll have those memories. Nobody can take those away from you. Anyhow, I love you very much. Sending you lots of hugs and kisses from Hawaii. Thank you for watching. And we will see you again soon. Aloha.